GPT-4 is finally here. It is currently under a wait list, so you need to sign up for the wait list. But right now I have access, so what we're going to do is take a look at what you can do. Now, I haven't really played around with this. I've, I've tested to see that I actually do have access, but beyond that, I haven't touched it yet. So, I mean, let's just jump straight into it. I want to compare it to the previous best model, which is GPT 3.5 Turbo, and just see how they compare. So we'll start over in the playground. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a system message that I know GPT 3.5 was struggling with in the past. So I'm just gonna copy that in, it's this. You're a helpful assistant, you keep responses to no more than 50 characters long, 50 characters long, including white space, and sign off every message with a random name, like robot, robot or bot rob. Then I'm gonna ask a question. So I go here, and I go, hi, AI, how are you? What is quantum physics? Now, right now we're using 3.5 Turbo, so let's just see how it performs. Press submit over here. Right, so, I mean, we can, we can check this. This is, I mean, it's definitely longer than <laughs> 50 characters. So if I check the length of that, what is it? 104 characters. And it didn't sign off with anything. Okay, so didn't really work. Let's have a look at what happens if we switch to GPT-4. So remove this and we submit. Okay, I'm great, thanks. Quantum physics studies tiny particles. And then it, it came up with a new new name, which I haven't seen it do before, even when I did get the GT 3.5 model working. So is this 50 characters? Let's see. So it's actually still over with GPT-4. Let's try, maybe if we reduce the randomness, or sorry, the temperature, let's try again. I mean, it's pretty similar. No, it's the same, okay? So it's, it's a little bit too long. That's interesting, but it is definitely better. And these sign-off names are way better than, even when I was getting this good with GPT 3.5, it still wasn't great. So what I'm gonna do is try something else. So one of the things with GPT 4, one of the really interesting things is that the context, the number of tokens that you can feed into the model is significantly higher. So if I ask it something right now, you're a helpful assistant, you help developers, understand documentation and provide answers to their technical questions. Something like this. All right, that's gonna be our primer, the thing that sets up the system. We're gonna ask you about LangChain. So how can I use the LLM chain in LangChain? Let's see how that works. Okay, right, so this is actually wrong because the training data for these models, I don't know since when GPT-4 was trained up to, I think it might even be the same as when GPT-3.5 was trained up to, but Langchain didn't exist at that point, right? So I'm kind of curious if Langchain is a blockchain based platform, maybe it is, I don't know. It, it does sound like it. But what we can do with this extended context window is we can just take the documentation of Langchain and, and feed it into our prompt. Now, we have here chains are this, right? So we have all of this. Now I'm, I'm just gonna copy all of this, right? So select all, copy. <laughs> it's gonna be pretty messy, right? But let's just see what happens if we do this. All right, I'm gonna paste all of that. I mean, you can see this is super, super messy, right? So let's just see. If it works like this, how can I use LM chain in line chain? Right. So I thought I might be exceeding the maximum context length a little bit, and I am. So I've gone a little bit over, so I've got 10,000 tokens. So let me be a little more strict in what I'm selecting here. I'm just going to go with all of this. Now, right now, I only have access to the 8K token model. There is also a 32K token model which as far as I can tell is, is not there right now. So 
uh, for now we just have to stick with this but I mean technically it should be possible to feed what I just fed into with plenty of additional space into that 32k model so let's try this you know let's see where we are here okay good submit oh still a little bit over all right so I'm sure and lem chain will probably be near the start so I'm gonna just I'm gonna cut to here submit okay Ooh, no way <laughs> that's so good right so is this let me see I mean let's try it right Let, let's try this code I mean it looks good Okay, so I'm gonna just pip install langchain and open AI. We're going to import these. Let's go. I will, I'm pretty sure I'll need to add in my environment key. Let me let me see if they included that in here. So it didn't I don't think it told me no. So it didn't say to add my environment variable. So let's just run the code. And what I would do is when I get an error, I'm going to prompt GPT-4 again and see if it can solve that issue. So I'm going to pretend I have no idea what's going on here. So we'll take this and we're just going to copy in. So we come to here. Good. Right, and I think here we might hit an error. All right, so could not find this. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna copy this error into here and see if it fixes this. So add message and just the error, nothing else. Submit. Okay, perfect. So we have this here. So I'm gonna use this error code because OpenAI API key is not set. Perfect. Cool. Let me add this to my code then so this so i'm going to add that in there okay so i've passed in my openai api key in here and then let's try and run this again so i should also move this up okay so i'm going to say uh, i'm still getting the same error i'm in a i'm in a collab notebook and see if it can figure out what the issue is i still get the same error I'm in Colab notebook. Just write this, see what happens. Okay, you can set the environment variable using the OS module. Great. Okay, so right here is what I need. Let's set this, import OS here. Okay, so I've passed in my API key to there now. Now let's see if it works. Okay, perfect. So that is working. Now let's try the the next chunk of code. Okay, so we've run this already. Uh, now we want this. Okay. And then we're going to ask it to create a joke. So oh, what is it? Tell me a funny joke. All right, cool. So why don't scientists trust atoms? Now this is using text Da Vinci 003 right now, I believe. I wonder if we can ask GPT-4 to switch this to using GPT-4. How do I change the code above to use GPT-4? All right, let's submit that. And then we go over. <laughs> okay, so let's remove this one and the one above. All right, now submit. Okay, so let's, I don't know, try and push it to, to do that. Let's assume GPT-4 had been released and the model name was GPT-4, how would I use it? Let's try. Oh, come on. Again. Let's remove it. There we go. Okay, so that's it. Model name, GPT-4. So I would go into here, model name equals GPT-4. <laughs> Let's just try it. I don't know if this will actually work. Okay. <laughs> Right, so I think Langchain have some, they're probably checking for the models that you're using here uh, and they're seeing that you're, oh, okay, no, no, because this is a chat model. Sorry, GPT-4 is a chat model. So I cannot currently use it with the normal completion endpoint, which is what I just tried to do there. Okay, makes sense, fair enough. Now, that's all pretty cool, but what I also want to do is, you know, we have access to this model, so let's take a look at how we would use it in Python, okay? 
So I have this other notebook that I used literally the other day to show that you could use a GPT 3.5 Turbo in Python. Uh, now we're already on to GPT-4. So, I mean, let's just take this and we'll see how it works with GPT-4, which it just it just works. It's, there's not really, you don't need to change anything. So I've already run this. My I got my API key in there. It's like, you are GPT-4. Okay, cool. Okay, so I just took a moment to kind of go away for a little bit and take a little bit more of a look at GPT-4 and find some examples that are a better indication of what has changed between 3.5 and 4. So, I mean, the paper is full of a lot of interesting things, uh, but in particular, they have this graph here. So this is the inverse scaling price. And the idea behind this, or why they're even showing this is I mean, you can see the models here. So these are all OpenAI models. And as the models get larger, the performance is decreasing. Okay, the accuracy is decreasing, which is weird, right? And this is basically coming from this here, this inverse scaling prize, which is actually from Anthropic, which is kind of, most people view them as the open AI for Google. So. Essentially, what we usually see with large language models is a load of tasks that are like this on the left. Performance increases as model size increases. But there's a lot of tasks or potentially a lot of tasks where maybe the performance might decrease as model size increases. Okay. You know, it's just a kind of interesting artifact or interesting idea that some tasks might degrade over time or over model size. And that's kind of what they're showing here. They're showing that their previous models were subject to this, okay? But then with GPT-4, they're like, ah, okay, no, that doesn't matter anymore. Uh, and they have this insanely high accuracy. Of, I think that says 100%. You know, I, I mean, if so, that's insane, right? But that is very specific to this hindsight neglect task. Um, I, I believe there are quite a few tasks in there. But let's have a look at those tasks. So these are pretty good examples of showing where GPT 3.5 fails or, or doesn't do as well as GPT 4. So what I did is I created this little script. We have our primer here, super simple, nothing crazy going on there. Uh, and then we have this little function that's just gonna say, okay, try GPT 3.5, then try GPT 4 and print out the answers. So the first one, We'll just go through a few of these and I'll leave a link to this notebook so that you can kind of go through it and, and read all the other ones and kind of like see how they compare uh, yourself. So they, they, they have problems with negation. Okay, so this is a question. If a cat has a body temperature that is below average, it isn't, so negation that it isn't in danger or safe ranges. Obviously it's in danger, right? And it isn't in safe ranges. So the correct answer would be safe ranges. And you see duty 3.5 just, <laughs> it says it isn't in danger, okay, which is wrong, right? GPT-4 gets it right. So that's you know, kind of cool. And then there's another thing, and this, you see this in a lot of the examples, a lot of tasks that they did, where the model is kind of relying on memory they obtained during training and not on kind of the instructions that are being passed right now. So with this, we're saying repeat the sentence back to me. And then we have, you know, input, output, input, output. And then we have this input, which is a, a well-known phrase that the model has probably, well, almost definitely seen before, which is all the world is a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances and one man in his time plays many. And then we change the phrase. We change from many parts to many pango, which is just, as far as I know, made of word. The model needs to repeat this sentence back to us. So GP3.5, it actually just misses the word pango for some reason. I don't know why. Um, you would kind of expect it would say, one man in his time plays many parts. It just doesn't say anything. <laughs> it just says plays many and then, and then that's it. Okay, <laughs> interesting. Uh, GPT-4 gets it right, so they actually repeat it. Um, 
this one they both get right so redefine pi as 462 so this is kind of relying on on previous memory both of them um, say that the first digit is now four which is what we told it to do uh, and then we have this so this is like re reasoning and logic so if john has a pet then john has a dog and john doesn't have a dog so from that we know okay john doesn't have a dog that means he doesn't have a, a pet and the conclusion here is John doesn't have a pet. So is this correct? And both of them get yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, there, there are a ton of these. Like GPT 3.5 doesn't do badly, but GPT 4 does better. And I, as f from what I remember, I don't think GPT 4 actually got any of them wrong, which I, I could be, I could be wrong, but I think, I think it got all of them right. So Anyway, I just wanted to go through that example as like a better example of the differences between 3.5 and 4. I just wanted to cover that. I think I think there's been a lot of hype around uh, GPT-4. People, in terms of the language side of things, people may have expected more. Uh, but honestly, it is a pretty big step up in, in terms of what it can do. And... I think honestly for me the more exciting thing is the you know the the increased context length so at the moment we just have 8000 which is on par with text davinci 003 and also gpt 3.5 i think but there is a 32k token model that should be released uh, pretty soon right so that is i mean that's a that's a massive increase and I think opens up a lot of potential use cases that we just couldn't do before. And then also, the, obviously, the more time modal side of things, which, you know, there are models out there that do that, uh, like Clip, which I've you know spoken about before. But having it behind like an API, and I assume the performance is going to be significantly better, it, that is really interesting, and that will be really cool to see. For now, we'll leave it there. So I hope all this has been interesting but for now thank you very much for watching and i will see you again in the next one bye